Okie dokie. So I've been working on my XU10 for quite a while now. Got Ember Lake running on it. I finally think I've got most of the uh, artwork and everything running on it. It's just whenever there's ROM hacks, there's going to be a blank spot. Because, yeah, there's no box art for that ROM hack, I guess. Anywho, a lot of work went into this. Got all the ports gone. You've know, already seen all that, I guess, if you watched the previous videos. If not, yeah, I got a lot of ports going. PSP, I'll show you something cool with that. Because, you know, it's got dual sticks. So here's what you can do. Alrighty, so what you would do is start a game configuration. Now, I've already got the game configuration going, but you would set up your own. Then you go into game settings, go into controls, control mapping, and make sure that double or that combo uh, mapping's allowed, like so. And I've already got everything double mapped. Alright, but say you want this one to be like this, you'd hit that plus sign, and boop, just like that. Alright, same thing with this, boop, that, boop. I think that's everything. And then you go back in there. Go back into your game. You don't want to eat it. And you can use your double sticks now. See? Alrighty, that's just one of the neat little tricks on here. Let's see here. Oh, I got all these really cool ones going. Um, anywho, you can also do the memory card trick where you can take a memory card from the internet and unlock everything. Like with um, Mega Man Powered Up. What else we got here? Now, I like the fact that whenever I was doing the um, cover art... Not everything was there, so I got fan art of it. Yeah, that was pretty neat. And sometimes you get box cart or box art, and then you go into it, and it's like the screenshot. So that's cool. <laughs> got my Solaris games going. The real kicker is just seeing what kind of box art you're going to get. Like, you know, sometimes you'll get the full mix. 
and I went through several scrapers just to get all this because not everything was showing up from a single scraper. So that's why I got a different mix of stuff. Like, you know, I'll have the screenshot here. Box art there, yada yada. And the ones that are blank, well, those are usually ROM hacks. But there's one for that ROM hack, so, you know, sometimes you'll have fan box art. Now here's where I spent a lot of cool time just working on this thing. And here's a neat little trick for you. Say you're doing your PlayStation games. Yada yada yada. Well there's my Resident Evils. But some bitch. I got more than that there, don't I? Why yes I do, yes I do. So it's not showing up right. What you do is you go over here to tools, run retro arch, all right. Mm -hmm. There we go. And I got some good Resident Evil games in here. It's just not showing up because they're bin files. See that right there? That didn't show up. And neither did that. And I'll show you why. <laughs> Oop. Well, let's go with that one. See, when it's ROM hacking, it's just the bin. It's got no cue to make a picture with, I guess. But you can still run it. Alrighty. And me, I like the arranged game. Lots of guns that way. A bizarre incident occurred in the outskirts of an American suburb. Well, anyhow, it's an FMV hack, and it's also a skin hack, so that when you go to play your character, it looks more like the updated Resident Evil 2 game.
Anywho, back to the educational stuff. Once you got everything installed, one thing you want to do is go into Tools and create your PlayStation M3U files. And whenever you're making those files, it doesn't read the bin files from those ROM hacks that I have. So, if I want to play them, I got to go into RetroArch. Now, about getting all your little pretty pictures there for your games. Well, PSP didn't have everything. <laughs> but a lot of the other older games, like PlayStation, oh yeah, definitely. And here's what you do. This is a Wi-Fi chip. And the Wi-Fi chip goes into the OTG port in the back of your handheld. And that way, you can turn on the network settings and turn on your Wi-Fi. Alright? Now, I'm not turning mine on because I've already done all this crap. But, you can put all your... You know, pretty box art on there with the Wi-Fi. You can get your ports running with Wi-Fi. You can do all kinds of neat crap, you know? But that's how you do it. You get that little chip, and you put it in the top of your device, and go on the internet and go to town. Getting your box art, getting your ports. Like with this one, you go down to Portmaster... Oh yeah, it's got the Wi-Fi off. <laughs> but you get the idea. Oh. Well, apparently it's working. Anyhow, you go into um, Portmaster and you'll download all your ports. Once you've downloaded your ports, then you go into your micro SD card and you transfer the PC files from your installed games on your laptop or whatever. And you can put PC games into your ports. So, you know, like Quake. Love Quake? You know, just take the files off of your PC game, put them in here, and now you can play Quake on your little handheld. Same with Serious Sam and Grand Theft Auto. So that's how the ports work. Alrighty, well, I don't want this video to get too long, I get bored, but I hope y'all learned something, and the XU-10 is no longer a piece of trash that I want to throw away. Yay, it's a lot better now. It's been fixed. Alright, hope you learned something.